Here is just some different pale shades of brown and white um, marbled together. You can do browns with reds and um, like medium browns to deep red browns and a tiny bit of like a really dark burnt umber. That would make a nice pretty cherry wood but I was wanting to go with something lighter. So here it is marbled and rolled out. And to help get a little bit of the... First I don't want it sticking to the template I'm going to be used to cutting. And I also want a little bit of texture on the cutting board. I'll do this on both sides. But I want it textured, but not with a toothbrush um, poking at it. That would be too holy. So there we go. I just kind of smooth it, keep it from sticking to my tools, and then I'm going to dust it off a little bit more so we can see the, the lines better of the wood. Dusting it off with my hands. And I think I'm going to want my lines running pretty much vertical. I'm trying to see if there's a place that I really, really like here. I'll just place it here. Now this little cutout that you see is um, the dimensions of my cutting board scaled down. It was um, scaled down, the dimensions are 2.91 centimeters by um, 2.4. So I made myself a little rectangle to those dimensions. And this way, I hopefully get a rectangle rather than a slightly different shape. There we go. And here is the little cutting board. And it looks like there might be little tiny pieces of something that's stuck from the flower. I wonder if this flower was aged. Time to replace it. So, to give it a little bit more of a worn look, you can chop into it um, slightly with little tools, needle tools, maybe a um, safety pin. I'm just smoothing the uh, the sides so it's not hard, hard edges, but it's a little bit softened. And um, what I was meaning by little cuts and stuff is I mean you can always put little tiny nicks in it like um, like it's been chopped from cutting things on it. You could put little tiny marks in it if you want. Um, I don't mind the toothbrush on it, but I'd rather do kind of a streak along the the faux grain of the wood. I have the grain of the wood lengthwise rather than widthwise. I'm just trying to be careful not to distort the wood. Sorry, I hope that I'm staying somewhat in frame. This is... I'm looking around the side of the camera rather than on top. I 
Ooh, that just gives you the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and cook this little guy and dust the powder off and let you see. Um, it could be sanded a little bit. You could even rough up the edges very slightly with the toothpick. Uh, most cutting boards are going to be slightly used. If you're cutting stuff up on them, you don't go out and get a new one each time. So you might want to try to reflect that by adding a little bit of character so it's not perfect. But I stick mainly to the streaks. So now after I cook this, um, I'm not going to show you the actual cutting board um, finished in this particular one because you're going to see it in the bell peppers but I will take a, a picture of this alone and I hope that you guys like it um, it's pretty darn simple I literally used ecru um, alone, ecru blended with white a tiny bit of white and then ecru blended with burnt umber um, this is lighter than burnt umber let's see if I here's burnt umber alone it's really really dark so you can see the difference but um, that's for a pale almost piney sort of color and you want to use richer browns for like mahoganies and cherry woods that's it hope that you guys like this you could ask any questions if you would like um, if you would like to see the books that I've amassed over time let me know <laughs>